Hi, this is Holly Taylor, Assistant State Naturalist for Tennessee State Parks, and today we're continuing our series on spring ephemerals in Tennessee, and we're back at beautiful Edgar Evans State Park to talk about trilliums today. And trilliums are a favorite wildflower of many, and we have 17 species to enjoy in Tennessee. So I'm going to show you some trilliums that are here at Edgar Evans State Park, and we're going to compare them, talk about the identifying characteristics of those species, and talk about the two categories that trilliums are divided into. So we have our toad shades, or sessile trilliums, and we also have wake robins, or pedicillate trilliums. So trilliums are members of the lily family, and the tripart in trillium refers to the fact that they have three petals and three sepals, and they can be found growing in a variety of habitats statewide, and there's some very unique species of trilliums that can be found in Tennessee. So this is a good example of Sweet Betsy trillium, or trillium cuneatum, and this is considered a toad shade, and it's because, number one, you have the really intense modeling on the leaves, and the flower sits right on top of the whorl of three leaves. And the most notable thing about Sweet Betsy when you get close to it is the fragrance. It has an amazing sweet, spicy, fruity, mouth-watering fragrance that you can actually pick up from a good distance away. And a way to tell visually which trillium you have is to open up the flower and look at the stamens. And in Sweet Betsy, oh, we got a little spider hiding in there. In Sweet Betsy, the stamens are blunt tipped. They have no projections on the end of them and that's how you know you have a Sweet Betsy Trillium. So this is Cecil Trillium. The Latin name is very easy. It's Trillium Cecil. And this is another example of a toad shade. And that's because, again, the flower sits right on top of the whorl of three leaves. And at first glance it may look a lot like other trilliums that we have that are similar looking, but you can see that the leaves aren't as heavily modeled as Sweet Betsy, for instance. And also, the flower is usually a little bit smaller. The biggest difference, though, is if you look inside the flower and you look at the stamens. And if you remember on Sweet Betsy, the stamens were blunt at the tip, and these have little beaked projections. And another difference is the fragrance. Now, where a Sweet Betsy has a very lovely fragrance. This one smells a little like, kind of like rotting fish. So it's not necessarily unpleasant to all palates, but it is definitely appealing to pollinators such as flies or insects that like things that are rotting or slightly turned. So that gives you an idea of the, the kind of pollinators it's looking for. So Cecil Trillium. So this is Prairie Trillium, or Trillium recurvatum, and you notice it's kind of taller than some other trilliums that we've seen so far. It has a smaller flower and these strongly recurved petals. And also, when you look at the stamens, gently pry this open here, you can see that the stamens are also strongly recurved in claw shape. And that's where the recurvatum comes from for trillium recurvatum. And this is another example of a toad shade because once again, the flower sits right on top of the whorl of three leaves. This is bent trillium, or trillium flexipes, and this is an example of a wake robin. And you can see that it has a stalked flower that grows up out of the leaf whorl, and also the leaves lack modeling, unlike the toad shades or sessile trilliums. And this species can be recognized by its white flower and its cream-colored anthers. And bent trilliums are pretty commonly found in calcareous soil, so they love areas in sinkholes, uh, areas where you have a lot of limestone. And this one does have a fragrance. It has sort of a musty, musky, sweet smell that attracts flies. So, Trillium flexipes, bent trillium. Another example of a wake robin or pedicillate trillium is large flower trillium, or Trillium grandiflorum. And this species is easily recognized by its large, showy white flowers and yellow anthers. And this can be found in the eastern half of the state, in rich, wooded areas. A lot of trilliums are pollinated by various species of flies, and you see this especially with the stinkier species of trilliums, but occasionally they're also pollinated by bees and beetles as well. 
So when it comes to seed dispersal, trilliums rely on ants, much like we talked about with Dutchman's britches. And there's a term for this, and it's called Mermeca curry. And as many as one-third of flowering woodland plant species in the United States rely on ants for seed dispersal. And they have this attachment to the seed called an eliosome, and it's fatty and nutritious, and it provides food for ants in early spring when there isn't much else to eat. And so the ant takes the seed back to its nest, and it eats the eliosome and discards the seed. And in an ant colony, they have a special room set aside for their trash, basically. And it's a compost heap, really, and it makes the perfect place for a seed to germinate. And so as far as a short distance seed dispersal, ants are crucial for so many of our spring ephemerals. But there are other species that will take seeds further away from the plant, and one of those is the yellow jacket, which will carry it further, and occasionally deer will browse and will also move the seeds further away. And they're really important for introducing the species to areas that don't have it. I hope you've enjoyed today's video on trilliums, and I hope that now you know the difference between a wake robin and a toad shade. And thank you so much for joining us today. As always, leave questions in the comments below, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thanks for watching.